AMD recently launched the B450 chipset for their new Ryzen 2 CPUs, which gives us a nice option under the X470 boards. I recently covered MSI's B450 Tomahawk board, and now we're looking at their B450M mortar, which has similar design elements but in a smaller form factor. So let's see what this board's got for us. Inside the box you get the motherboard itself, I.O. shield, two SATA cables, MSI badge sticker, screws for the M.2 slots, installation guide and manual. The board has a nice clean black and grey metallic colour scheme, similar to their B450 Tomahawk, so nothing flashy going on here. It's also available as the titanium edition in white though if you'd prefer that. There's some RGB lighting toward the top right hand side, and this can be controlled using MSI's LightSync software. In total there are about 10 different built in effects, but you can always turn it off if you don't like it. It's a micro ATX board, coming in at 24.4cm by 24.4cm. Unfortunately I don't have any specific micro ATX cases on hand, so it looks a little small in my H700i. Starting with the IO, from the left there's a BIOS flashback button, a PS2 port, two USB 2.0 Type-A ports, DisplayPort and HDMI 1.4 outputs, which are only usable if you're using an APU with Vega graphics, four USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-A ports, Gigabit Ethernet port, USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-A and Type-C ports, followed by the audio ports using Realtek ALC892. Here's how the included black and white IO shield looks. At the center of the board is the AM4 socket, which supports both AMD's new Ryzen 2 CPUs, but is also compatible with the first generation too. And for my testing I'm using the Ryzen 7 2700 CPU with the stock cooler. Next to the socket are the four memory slots which run in dual channel and can support up to 64GB of memory at DDR4 2666 speeds. In my system I'm just running two 8GB sticks as that's what I've got available, and with overclocking you can run up to DDR4 3466. I've heard that with the second generation of Ryzen memory support has improved. So compared to say B350 you should have better luck with memory overclocking, but as mentioned I don't have any exciting memory so I wasn't able to test that out. As a micro ATX board, PCIe slots are limited. From the top down there's a PCIe 3.0 x16 slot, although it runs at x8 speeds if you're using Vega graphics from an APU, and the slot is also reinforced with metal. Next are two PCIe 2.0 x1 slots. Although if you use the bottom of the two, the one above will be disabled, followed by a PCIe 2.0 x16 slot, which runs at x4 speeds, giving us support for two-way crossfire, no mention of SLI though. The first M.2 slot is found just above the PCIe slots, while the second is found just after the x1 slots. The top slot uses PCIe 3.0 with four lanes straight to the CPU, while the second slot uses PCIe 2.0 with four lanes via the chipset. But if you use the second M.2 slot then the bottom PCIe slot becomes unusable. Along the top there's an 8 pin power connector and CPU fan header. Along the right hand side there's four SATA 3 connectors, two of which are on a different angle, the 24 pin power connector and a system fan header. Finally along the bottom there's the front panel audio, second system fan header, RGB header, TPM connector, two USB 2.0 connectors followed by a single USB 3 connector, the front panel connectors and second RGB header. There's also a third system fan header just above the PCIe slots. Using the SATA ports there's support for RAID 0, 1 or 10, and there's also support for RAID 0 or 1 using the M.2 slots. The mortar also supports AMD's new StoreMI technology, which basically uses an SSD to cache frequently accessed items from a hard drive, resulting in faster overall performance. To boot into the BIOS simply press the delete key during boot, it was basically the same as other MSI motherboards I've used, easy to navigate through and make changes, and I had no issues while updating to the latest version, noted here, which is what I was testing with. The BIOS can be upgraded easily by copying the update files onto a USB stick, plugging in and pressing the BIOS flashback button on the back of the board. It just takes a few minutes to complete. This feature wasn't present in the B350 model, and gives us the ability to easily upgrade the board, which is really useful given the AM4 socket will be supported until 2020. So when new CPUs come out you won't have any issues if you buy the board with say third generation Ryzen in the future. With B450 you've also got the option of overclocking too. In my testing I was able to easily get my 2700 to 4GHz on all cores, although I didn't do in-depth overclock testing. We've got 4 plus 2 VRMs here, 
and I wasn't able to measure the temperatures with hardware info because there didn't seem to be a temperature sensor for the VRM. Here's what the heatsink areas look like at idle using a thermal camera around the mid 20s. And with the overclock applied under stress test, this area went up by around 20 degrees after an hour. As for the pricing, the MSI B450M Mortar Motherboard is going for around 155 Australian dollars here in Australia at the time of recording, or 107 US dollars in the US for my international viewers. You can check updated pricing in the description. There are both cheaper and more expensive B450 boards. Even in the micro ATX form factor, you've got a few options, but it seemed pretty decent for what you're getting. Overall, I thought the MSI B450M Mortar was a nice board. It's the first micro ATX board I've checked out, and in many aspects, I liked it more than the larger ATX Tomahawk that I reviewed previously, especially as you're getting those two M.2 slots and more USB ports on the back. Let me know what you guys thought down in the comments and what other boards you're looking at. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for future tech videos like this one.